Well, it's good to be in church with you, Bridge Church. We're so excited for what God is going to do this year, but we want to take a moment and look back and celebrate what God did last year. So while you're on your way to your seat, uh, take a look at the screens. look at those uh, numbers and man, you, you, it tells a story and it's wonderful. But I, I don't know me, the competitive side of me, I see that 936,000 uh, as a three and a half year old church. And let me just tell you, I'm like, we've got 60 more, you know, like we're, we're so close guys. If we, if we, we were almost at that million mark, if we just, we could do this together, I'll refund you. Let's just get the number up. <laughs> just, <laughs> that's just the competitive craziness in me. Uh, but man, I see those, I see like salvations and baptisms. Let me just tell you, I, 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 I you may not be familiar with church statistics and numbers right now. Uh, and you may uh, see a big number or small number in some of those, but let me just tell you to be where we're at as old as we are and coming out of a pandemic compared to a lot of churches, we have a lot to be thankful for. And, and, and that's just wonderful. And that's uh, not in a comparison, you know, but, but in a sense of like, they're, they're, God is faithful. God is so good. And, and to see a lot of people making good, healthy decisions. And, and, and I don't know about you, but also I saw the comparison of like the people that were in life groups and then the number that we're serving, we're pretty close to the same amount. And so that speaks to your involvement. When, when you're a part of a life group, you know, you, you have an invested interest. And so now when you serve, you have a vested interest. And so that church becomes something that you know, goes from something you watch to something you are and you're a part of. And so I hope you make the leap this year. Not not a voyeur, not a spectator, but somebody who says, no, I'm a part of the body of Christ and I, I belong to a tribe. I belong to a family and Bridge Church is my family. Slap your neighbor next to you and say, you better be a part. Be a part of something. Uh, uh, don't don't be isolated. The enemy loves uh, isolated, lonely targets. So so don't allow yourself to be in that vulnerable position. You don't need to be, especially when there's so many great people out there. We like going to church with each other. I know that churches you know are different everywhere, but we actually. I hope you smile a little bit more here. We actually like you, and I hope. And I preach thinking you like me, and 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 it makes it so much easier to to, to preach, assuming we all love each other. Um, that's a healthy place to assume. Uh, but I, I, I encourage you to uh, uh, just step into 2022, bright, beautiful, hopeful, faithful. Say, God, you got something great for me. 2021, uh, I, God gave us a word. It was beyond. And man, I'm believing 2022. God's going to do incredible work. And I'm going to share the word that God gave uh, to us for this year. But I want you to open your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11, uh, verse 8 through 12. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8 through 12. And then I also want you to get out your notes and, and take good notes today. Because I'm going to give you a lot of teaching to start us off. I'm going to give you a lot of 
uh, uh, some numerology. I'm going to give you some uh, definition uh, uh, of Hebrew words and, and direction. And then, of course, what the Holy Spirit is saying uh, through uh, this church for this ministry in this house for what God's calling us to do this year. And I think every church should have a healthy vision for the year because we tell people to have good, healthy goals and direction and mission for the year. Uh, uh, and yet some churches don't do it. They, they keep with the old thing that they had 30 years ago. And you ought to have fresh vision every year because God wants to do a fresh work and a new thing. And so it's good to have a fresh word each year. We encourage everybody to have a scripture each year, have a new scripture. And if all you did for the rest of your life is memorize one scripture a year, uh, you, you're doing better than a lot of people. And so you, you're, you're doing it a great track where you're at least making that a part of something not just you know, but something you do because memorization is the lowest form of learning. Application is the highest form of learning. And if you can apply one scripture a year, you're doing incredible. Uh, and so make sure that you take that, apply that, put that a part of what you're doing in your life. Uh, but I want to uh, share with you, kind of dive into what the Lord has for us. Now, for those who don't know, uh, we launched uh, t a third into 2018 as a church. And when we did, uh, we didn't really know what we were going to do or how we were going to do it. Uh, but I really just leaned on our state motto because uh, I knew I was called to Arizona, and, and we were called to plant a church here in Flagstaff. Our state motto, if you don't know it, is Detat Deus, which means God enriches. And if you don't know it, you should write that down if you don't know that. You get a little factoid for you, uh, a little trivia for party questions. But then when you also, when you look into that, it comes from a scripture in Genesis that uh, they based it on the blessing of Abraham. And so we don't have to, we're not going to go into all that today, but that was 2018. 2019 uh, is where God gave us the word, the name for our church, Bridge Church. And so we launched as Bridge Church. And then 2021, or sorry, 2020, uh, we, uh, God gave us a word in November of 19 for 2020, and it was the voyage. And the tagline was launching into uncharted territory. And let me just tell you, you should rewind and look at the, the sermons at the beginning of 2020. I'm like, God's going to do something incredible this year. And I don't know, I expect the unexpected. And I was preaching all these things. And then all of a sudden, March hit. And I'm like, oh, like the unexpected really did hit. And then you're like, oh, this is too real, God. Give us a different word. And then it was 2021, God gave us a word from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. It was beyond, and it was to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all that you could ask, think, or imagine. And I have heard testimony after testimony. During 2021, we saw four people healed of cancer. During 2021, we saw someone literally in revival, their spine straightened up. In 2021, in revival, we saw one who used to wheel himself into this church. He got up out of his wheelchair and walked. His legs were not not used to, and now he walks. If you're not clapping for that, you ought to check your pulse, baby, because this is like a modern day miracle. He got up out of a wheelchair and walked. The dude hasn't walked in forever. And now he like literally walks in the church. Even his uh, a therapist said, hey, your physical therapist said, hey, you can't use the, the wheelchair anymore. Your legs are working now. And they said, you got to build these muscles. You got to build this stuff. So God did exceed, God gave Emily and I a baby. We prayed for 14 years and God gave us a baby. I'm like, yes, that was, that was a huge miracle. I hope God, I heard about homes and I heard about businesses. I heard about people thriving when you should not be thriving and, and healthy when you should not be healthy. Let me just tell you, I'm not going to give you all of my background and medical history, but I've been around a lot of people the last few the last couple of years, and I have not gotten sick one day. I, the Holy Spirit has kept me. I haven't gotten COVID. I haven't gotten anything. I'm not a super spreader. I'm not anything like that. But I, the, the Holy Holy Spirit, that's a, to me, that's a beyond moment. That's the Holy Spirit saying for you, Landon. Now, I hope you can look back and say, God, you were good to me beyond what I was worthy of. Now, some of us think, and I just, if I can, some of us look at beyond and we think beyond means only God adding. But when God can go beyond in your life, it's not just when he adds, but when he subtracts. Because some things in your life go beyond your comprehension. When God removes something you thought you needed and you weren't supposed to have. So God will remove things and that is an, that's a beyond moment. And God removed unhealthy things, hopefully, in your relationship, in your mind, in your life. And that's, that's okay. It's okay to, to have separation from unhealthy things. And so now 2022, I want to share the word that God gave for me. And I, I just want to 
Man, I really want to preach. I just want to start right now and just forget about even teaching anything. But I, I just got to first start off and say, hey, I can share a vision, but, but if we're not going to do anything with it, we don't need to share any vision. I could share a word from the year and what it means and teach a lot of great stuff. But I think, can we just get excited for a second and say, 2022 is going to be a good year. It's going to be, God's got it. I believe it. Before anything is shared, I just know on the basis of my relationship with the Lord, he's been good, he'll remain good. So I'm not walking into 20, because I'm going to share the vision of 2022 that is unlike what the world is telling you. And and you're going to have a hard time hearing this if your flesh is in control, if facts are in control, if statistics are in control, if politics are in control. If the economy is in control, if, if, you're, if, if, you're, if you're, all of those things, I'm not going to push any more buttons. If, if, if any of those things are in control, you, you, this is going to do no good. The, the word, this, will have, this will, will do no good because someone else has a greater voice in your life. And so the reason we're here today and online today is because we're saying, God, I want to hear what you, who, the Bible says, who will believe the report of the Lord? I'm not here. I hope you fast during this time of <laughs> You have no idea how demonic that is right now. The, I don't even remember where I was. 2022, we got to say it again. Fasting and praying. I hope you fast. The, when you want to watch the news, shut it off and read your Bible. When you want to scroll on social media, shut it off and pray. If, if you want to know what's happening in the world, you stop trying to be so in tune with what's happening in the world instead of what's happening in the word. We cannot be attuned Christians and believers when we're so worldly minded and, and, and we're absent of the word of God in our life. That's where bitterness sets in, frustration sets in, anxiety, stress, worry, all those other things. That's where, that's where I cannot move in a healthy way in any relationship in my life because I am now, I'm listening to more of the world than the word. Is that good? Okay. So now let's go into, so I want to talk to you now. Uh, I'm going to share with you. I don't always do the Hebrew year and I don't always do the numerology towards it, but I want to paint a picture. So I'm going to do a little bit of teaching and then I'm going to get back into and juxtapose the two between the numerology and the Hebrews chapter 11, verse eight through 12. Okay. Does that sound good? All right. And we'll get as far as we can today. Now also take a deep breath. All, all, all you people who are like, he's got to get it all done. He's only got a certain amount of time. Uh, listen, I'm going to start this. This is just an introduction. Throughout the rest of this year, I'm going to be unpacking. There's a lot to it. In fact, I'm going to do a whole series called Greenhouse, and it's going to talk about how to dwell with the Lord and how to build a house with the Lord, okay? So we're going to get into all of that here in a second. Uh, But 2021, in that year, the Hebrew year was 5781, okay? I want you to write that down because I'm going to give you all the definitions of those numbers. So 5781, in that year, when you see 5781, every number has a, uh, a meaning uh, and a picture. So it's not just, and, and it's a letter. So there's a lot to every number, every letter, and every picture because there's a lot to the language when it comes to the Hebrew language. Uh, my brother uh, works for counterintelligence and he knows Hebrew and Arabic and me and him talk all the time about this and what it really means and diving deeper into the Hebrew language. And so I want to teach you a little bit just about the year. So now first off, the Hebrew year ended and began in September 8th to September 13th of 2021. So it wasn't a day, it was multiple days, September 8th to the 13th. That's when the year changed over from 5781 to 5782. Now in 5781, it's important to know because one year builds upon the other. The Bible says line upon line, precept upon precept, one thing upon the other, the Lord builds. God doesn't just do a random year, God builds Does that make sense? Okay, so five, now five for all my numerologists out there, you could say, no, Pastor Landon, five means grace. Yes, in the first position, but in the thousandth position, it actually means opportunity or open door of opportunity, okay? And so then when you see seven, seven, of course, you see it says sword, divine authority. I want you to uh, write down divine if you want to write down a word. And then eight is chet, which means fence, wall, or protection. We're also going to talk about dwelling. Uh, and then uh, uh, one, Aleph, where we get our, where our first letter of the alphabet, A, 
is a, a new beginning. So in 2021, I, maybe it resonates with your heart uh, that, that there was a new beginning. And so I want to give you the phrase from 2021. It was this, a year of God's opportunity for divine protection for new beginnings. So God may have begun something new for you. God began, uh, maybe he bought a new home for you. Maybe he got a new car for you, new job for you, new position. I've heard, maybe you started a new degree. Maybe you, whatever it may be, maybe God, like me, he got, he gave you a baby. And so you got something new in your home. And so God started something new. Now, the only thing that changes about the, the year is it goes from five, seven, eight, one, right? The only number that's going to change is the last one. So it goes from one to Two. So two means bet, B-E-T, and that means house or dwelling. So now let's change up the definition a little bit. I want you to write this down. Opportunity for divine protection over the dwelling place. So now it's a divine protection over a dwelling place, okay? So when you see this, now I had to begin to pray and say, Holy Spirit, what does that mean for us uh, personally and as a church? Because now you've got to relate it to me and what we're going through and where we are in our life. And this is what the Holy Spirit gave me. He said, what, we get, what I began in 2021, I will sustain in 2022. The good new things that I started, I gave you a new career, a new job, a new friend, a new family, a new marriage, a new whatever the newness of, maybe he gave you a new mind. Maybe he gave you a new heart. Maybe you're one of those people who got baptized and you started 93 different people started a whole new chapter of their life. And it's a new season for them. And maybe they gave their life to Jesus that year. Maybe the, whatever the new is, God told me, he said, whatever that new thing is, I'm going to cover it. I'm going to protect it and I will help develop it and grow it. So God is going to sustain what he began. That's a great thing. That's awesome. And I don't know about you, but God began some good things in my life. And if you want to see God sustain that in your life, give God a little praise right now. Because if it's God, it's his job. But if it was you, let me just tell you, some things might not last. And it's simply because they may not have been from him. And so in 2022, I began to ask the Lord, what do you want us to speak over this year? And what does this year mean for us? So, of course, you see it behind me in big, bold letters, and it's back on our vision wall. We have a picture board down there where you can go take a picture today. I mean, I, I remember before COVID, I remember people used to check in on social media, be like, I'm at church, you know, and they check in, going to church today, or take a selfie. When was the last time you did that? Or have you ever done that? I have a lot of people, they post about, man, I'm finally traveling again. I'm finally going to concert again. I'm finally going going here, going there. What, why don't we get proud enough at church this Sunday to take a selfie with somebody and say, I went to church today and I'm happy I did. Because why not? And you may not be a social media person, but let me just tell you, social media needs you. We need an influence of, of healthy, good, godly people. To We don't need to give up. I remember when radio became the thing of, oh, don't listen to, and Christians got all weird about the radio. Christians got weird about the TV, and Christians get weird about social media. Stop being weird. We, 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 need, to, we need to own the radio. We need to own the TV. We need to own these. And we, these are mountains that we are meant to take, not meant to abandon. And these are uh, mountains, that, and this is a whole different message, but we need to not surrender these places. We need to go ahead and say, this is territory God called us to take. Yeah. This is an area where kids are being bullied. This is an area where uh, there's all kinds of filth and sin. We need to speak truth, and we need to speak into this area. So I'd encourage you to take a selfie today and, and post and let people know, man, I went to church, and I'm happy about it. But when you see this, it's divine dwelling. And then, of course, the tagline that the Holy Spirit gave us, Emily and I, in November is, God's spoken covering for a house of generations. And I'm going to talk to you about generations and how that ties in with what the num numerology means. But now I want you to go to Hebrews chapter 11. I'm going to show you. So we're going to start today and at least get through a few scriptures. And hopefully we get into this because when I talk about generations, I had to do that because I felt like the Holy Spirit was telling me it's not about a thing. It's about a who. And when God does a, something new, it's about a person, not about a thing. And so God began some, something or someone new as someone was birthed through baptism and salvation. Someone new was born. Behold, the old is gone, the new has come, right, for those who are in Christ Jesus. And so we're a new creation in Christ. And so the new has come, and God's going to sustain that, build that, grow that, protect that, and develop that. Because if we just talk about things, God is not just about things, God is about people. And so God is a God also a God of like saying, I just don't want to save you. I want to save your kids and your grandkids 
And, and I want to see generations because God is a God of generations. And I want you to write this, think in threes, write that down, think in threes. The Bible says a three-stranded cord is not easily broken. And, and what he means by that is not a husband and wife with, with God. He means I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's more prolific throughout the entire Bible than the other. So God is a God of a three-stranded cord. Why? A generational God. That the blessings will continue to visit the third and fourth generations just as much as the iniquity. And today, if we have time, or this month, I'm going to get to generational curses and generational blessing. And let me just tell you, that's what the Holy Spirit really wants me to focus on the most, is that the Holy Spirit, and I just hear him right now in my heart and my mind telling me that we need to break generational curses this year. We need to break from, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then that's okay. We're going to introduce this to you because there's some things that were passed down. My daddy got divorced. My mommy got, uh, my grandfather got divorced. My, my family just been riddled with divorce. And they, he had three marriages. She had two marriages. And then, no, 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 no. God's saying no more. I'm going to break some generational curses. Uh, oh, well, I, my, my, my grandfather was dirt poor. My dad was poor. I'm going to be poor. No, breaking generational curses. Oh, no, I, I, I was always living in sin and iniquity. The Bible says the iniquity will visit the third and fourth generation. And let me just tell you, if the iniquity can visit, so can the blessing because what God has blessed, no man can curse. And if God can bless you, God can bless the second and the third generation. But you got to be able to start saying, I got to dwell with the Lord. That's why David said, Hey, look, I may be jacked up, but I'm breaking some generational curses. And I am going to break those generational curses by what did he say? He said, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever because David knew how to dwell with the Lord. David knew how to have divine appointments, divine real briefly. And we'll talk more about it but divine simply means from God. I need things from God, not from man. There's been a lot of people handing me a lot of garbage. I don't need that. I need God in my life. And I need God giving me divine appointments. I need God giving me divine direction. I need God giving me divine provision. I want it to come from God because if it's from God, it'll last. Because God always builds what lasts. So let's go to verse 8. It says, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And when he went out, not knowing where he was going. So he went out not knowing where he was going. That sounds a little bit frustrating, especially I'm a planner. I like to know where I'm going. And God may be speaking. God spoke in covering. God is calling you to step out. Maybe he called you to step out in 2021. Maybe he calling, he's calling you to step out this year. Step out of an old mindset. Step out of an old attitude. Step out, step, out, step out of the old sin. Step out of the old ways. Step out of the old habits. Maybe he's calling you to step out of, out of that place of complacency. Uh, maybe he's calling you to step out in a place of faith and say, okay, let's try this out. And let's go a little bit further. Abraham had to step out not knowing where to go, what to do, and how to do it. That's a step of faith. Because uh, sometimes we're just waiting. We, we, we're like, okay, God, show me which way I'm supposed to go. He had no idea which first step was the right step. And let me just free you. Can I free some Christians real quick? All, a lot of Christians look at Christianity like this with their relationship with God. There is the right way and there's the, there is A and then there is B, right? I either I did it right and I heard God or I didn't hear God. Right? This is how we this is how we operate. I'm telling you, this is how I have operated at times. Where I'm like, I just want to make sure it's the Lord. And we're like, we just got to get in tune with the Holy Spirit. And we're like trying to like, if I just pray and I worship, and if I'm seeking the Lord, then I'll get in some kind of weird spiritual rhythm that I just like, okay, and it's this step. And then we just step right into it. Let me just tell you, God is not, God cares less about where you step, just that you step. And God didn't say, hey, Abraham, I will bless that step if it's in the right place. He told Abraham, Abraham, wherever you set your feet, I will give it to you. We're, we're, it's not an A and B, it's A, B and C. C is God, I think it's you. Bam. And we take a step. How many of you, raise your hand if you've ever done that before in your life. Come on. Who's truthful in this place? Well, because we, we take a step of faith and we're like, I think it's God. And this is what the enemy wants to do. The enemy wants to pervert your relationship with the Lord thinking it was A or B so that if it doesn't turn out the way you thought it should, you go back to saying, I don't think I heard God. You did hear God. God didn't say I'd be there. God said, I will be in you just as I was in him. And I will never leave you nor forsake you. We keep making the 
these decisions based on we think God will be there, but God's not there. God is here. Oh, give God some praise right now. If you, this is setting somebody free. In your mind, in your heart, you're like, oh, should I do that degree? Should I take that job? Should I, Pastor, I'm just praying about this position. Hey, you don't need to pray about it. Just take that darn step. Step out. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He'll bless every, the Bible says he'll bless everything you touch your hands to. Everywhere you set your feet. Why? Because he cares less about the place and more about the person. Abraham could have walked in circles. Abraham could have walked anywhere. Abraham, he could have ended up in China. He could have ended up, he blessed where Abraham set his feet. He said, that's what I'll give you because you stepped by faith. You stepped out into a territory you had no idea. But a lot of us, we just, oh, but I, I don't know. We're, we're looking at like step, we're looking for step eight, nine, 10, and 20. And we're like, ah, uh. and we're so fearful because we don't know how step one, two, and three are going to work out. And so we just stay here. I want to show you something. This is a picture of some gazelles. Now, uh, the first one is gazelles in the wild. And gazelles, uh, they can leap uh, 30 feet in distance and 10 feet in the air. That's pretty neat. And, but in captivity, it's a little different. Show the blurry, terrible picture of captivity. Okay, yeah. I couldn't, that is a gazelle. It's not a lie. It's not just a blurry brown figure. It is a gazelle. And that is a three-foot wall right behind it. So this is at a zoo, and all they have to keep this gazelle in is a three-foot wall with no fence. Okay, and let me tell you why. Because gazelles have an innate fear uh, that they will never leap where they cannot see where they'll land. So there's more fear of leaping over a three-foot wall than the fear of living in captivity. And many of us, because we can't see what that leap will look like, we decide never to go. And we decide, I'd rather, I'd rather stay in captivity. I'd rather stay in my sin and shame. I'd rather stay in my comfort. I'd rather stay in complacency. I'd rather stay on this side of the fence because I don't know what that looks like. How does it look like planting a church? What does it look like writing a book? What does it look like launching a business? Oh, God, but let's just wait to see how the economic status just changed before I launch this business that you've been telling me to do for the last five years. I just want to wait to see how it all shapes out. And five years turns to 10 and 10 years turns to 20. I, I, oh God, I'll wait, I'll wait before I really make that decision because I don't know how it's all going to work out. And I'm more fearful about making a decision. Let me just tell you, indecision is a decision. When you, when you, when you, when you fail to make a decision, you are making a decision. And you are saying, this is where I want to stay. This is where I want to be. Let me just tell you, go by faith. Leap by faith. The first step of, when you hear the word of God, go to that new church, go to a worship service, go pray, go hear God, go write that book, go, go take a chance in that relationship, go take a chance at re rekindling, go take a chance at whatever that may be, go take a chance, step out in faith. God is with you. Some of us, we, we sit here and we keep doing the guilt trip thing. We, I'm not good enough and I just know I'm not perfect. And well, I just don't want to do that because I know I'm not really ready. I know I don't know enough. I don't know have enough. Listen, my father taught it a, a, a while back. He said, I never had enough money to do what I wanted to do. And yet he did everything that he wanted to do. Let me just tell you, there's never going to be the moment where you feel intelligent enough, where, where you have, uh, feel like you have enough money in the account, where you feel like you've got enough faith. We, faith is all you need is the size of a mustard seed, and you can move mountains. But we're sitting here, we're like, oh, I just, ah. Take a leap of faith. 2022 is a leap of faith. Don't listen to what the world is saying. It's God's spoken word, a covering, an opportunity. Remember that word? An opportunity. For us to step out, not an obstacle, but an opportunity. Verse 9, it says, By faith he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling, there's our word, in tents with Isaac and Jacob. Wait, 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 they weren't there. Not at the beginning. The heirs, there's that generational word, with him of the same promise. So listen, what God is promising to you, this is just extra right now, we'll get to it more later. What God is promising to you isn't just for you. And don't make decisions today based on what's good for now. Make decisions today what's based on good for the future. What's based on good for second and third generations. A lot of people get themselves into trouble because they're not planning for what am I going to leave for my son? What am I going to leave for my grandkids? Plan for the future. Plan for your legacy. 
Now, this is a difficult place of, of, of Scripture because we're talking about dwelling. And he says, I want you to go dwell. Well, where does he want him to dwell? He wants him to go to a foreign land that he's telling Abraham is his, but it belongs to other people. And he's a, so somehow God told Abraham, but speaks to nobody else or forgot to tell everybody that it belonged to Abraham and that he's supposed to get it, which caused all kinds of frustration. Let me just tell you, God's going to call you into places you may feel uncomfortable and out of place. And it may feel like everyone else knows what's going on except for you. And it may feel like God's calling you out to dwell with him and you're going to be in a place that you, you seem like a stranger. You seem like, okay, God, is this the right fit? And again, you're going to go back and you're going to wonder, am I walking with the Lord? Did I hear God? Because if you heard God, it should feel good. That's how we teach Christians. If you hear God, oh, I should step out and everybody, I should be buddies with everybody and I should be all friends and I should, my business will thrive and everything will go good and everybody will like me. Let me just tell you, people will not like you and they're not going to be buddies with you. You're going to step out planting a church in Flagstaff, the first person I ever met was a pastor, and he said, we don't need more churches. I'm like, what did you call me here for, God? And, and, and when I became a pastor, I had people literally walk up to me and are like, you? Why you? I'm like, I don't know. And all I did was sit there and say, oh my God, I, recently my new year started out differently than what you may think. I started out the new year saying, God, you're going to do it. What you built, you sustain. I'm living by faith and not by sight. And I got attacked by people. And I had to put out a restraining order on somebody because they attacked my wife and my baby and myself. So that balloon that popped really kind of scared me. And so I, I, I started off my year saying, Lord, are you, is this, am I in the right place? Am I doing the right thing? But I, I go back to not do I feel right, but where is my faith? Am I, do, God, are you with me? God, I'll stay in the same place. I'll do what you called me to. I'll go into a place where it doesn't feel comfortable. God, I'll step out where it's difficult. I'll be in a place that I feel I'm surrounded by people who are my enemies. But just like David said, David said, though my enemies be encamped all around me, I will not be put to shame for my God will not be mocked. Let me just tell you, God will not be mocked. And if he called you there, there, you stay put there. If God called you to step out, you step out in faith because God's not calling you to say, hey, I want you to be comfortable. God's calling you out to be challenged in your faith, to say, I want to have great faith. And let me tell you, when you have great faith, you are a great target. Great faith becomes a great target. Small people like to take shots at big targets and that's okay. It comes with the territory. But if you're going to step out in 2022, remember, what did I say? I started off by saying, Who's ready? Who, who really wants a great year? You're going to have to step out into a greater level of faith. You're going to have to step out into a greater dimension. You're going to have to step out and to say, okay, Lord, I want to dwell with you. And the, and the next scripture, and this I'm going to close with this scripture, and we'll get to the next verses next week. It says, for he waited for the city. Listen, he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Somebody say divine. divine. Come on, say it again. Divine. So now I'm dwelling and now I'm the divine is stepping in. So you see how it came after? He, he said, I want you to dwell there and there's going to be some uncomfortable times. But now I'm going to show you what when you pass through that test of the uncomfort, when you pass that test of challenge and controversy, I'm going to help you dwell in a divine way. And it's going to be because I have a foundation that only I built. And again, when God builds it, it lasts. When God builds it, no man can tear it down. When God builds it, those who labor, labor in vain, lest the Lord builds it. We're not called to build. I, I want to I go to a divine place. I, I want to have a divine. I'm praying for a bigger church, a bigger property, and all that kind of stuff. But I, I, I'm tired of looking with my natural eyes. I want to I walk out and say, okay, Lord, I just want you to lead me because this is a foundation that no man built. This is a, a, this is a huge creation and established place that you already got prepared for me that no man touched. But you, you had it ready for me. And God is preparing a way for you where there was no way. God is laying 
laying a foundation for you. The Bible says, I'll give you vineyards you did not plant. I'll give you houses you did not build. God will give it to you, and God is going to establish your year, not only when you step out in faith, not when you only obey his word, not only when you dwell with him, but when you look for the divine. And you say, okay, God, I know I'm looking not just for something that came from man, because if you're looking for man to give you the bonus, if you're looking for man to bless you, if you're looking for man to fill you, if you're looking for the politicians in the world to finally make you feel good about what's going on, if, you, if you're looking for the economy to make you feel good, it's always going to be unsustainable. But if the maker is God, then God's foundation will never be shook. God's foundation will never falter. God's foundation will never change. Because when you build on God, it's always a sure footing. And, and, and this huge piece of our walk with the Lord is, is understanding that when we're going to step into a bright, new, wonderful, beautiful 2022 is I need to, I need to have enough faith to not look for what man's trying to give me. You remember the deal that uh, was trying to happen in the Old Testament with Abraham and he had won the victory of conquering these four other kings. And so the, uh, uh, the king of Sodom came down and he tried to make a deal with him. And he said, Hey, let's do a deal, buddy. You give me the people and I'll do this. He's trying to make a deal. And he said, no, no, no. No man is going to get credit for what only, des- what only God deserves. Right. And then Melchizedek, the king of peace, came down and, and, and then did, made a covenant with Abraham in that moment. Because Abraham was deciding, I'm not going to look for man to meet my needs. I'm not going to look for man to, to be my source. I'm not going to look for what man built. I'm going to look for what only God can establish. I'm going to look for what only God can do. And that's what we need to change our eyes and our hearts towards this year. Maybe it's a spouse. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's a degree. Maybe, maybe it's a business. Maybe it's a book. Maybe, maybe it's just stepping out in faith in a new city, a new church. Whatever it may be, God is calling you to say, stop looking for the natural. And, and try to see in a supernatural dimension of what only I could do. Try to see in a, in a place where that doesn't make sense with your mind, but resonates with your spirit. I, I, sometimes people come into this church and they're, they're trying to logically figure God out. Let me just tell you, if God was that small, that our little brain, I'm going to say our, not just you, our little brain could figure him out, he's not God. Yeah. So trying to figure God out is something you need to give up on. Amen. But you need, if you can experience God, encounter God, now that's a different story. Because then you, you can understand the relationship aspect and piece of it. People tried to figure God out. That's called the old covenant. The new covenant is relational, not religious. And it's about saying, okay, God, I can't do the work, but I can be the worship. And I can be in a place of relationship with you. That's just in harmony with you because it goes beyond really what I can figure out. And, and I'm going to go into next week. I'm going to talk to you about Sarah. And the seed, because if Abraham had faith for the land, it's one thing to, if you just have land and no seed, you have nothing to grow. But next comes Sarah and they had to come into agreement. So you're going to, I'm going to talk about how to come into agreement with the right people who got the missing component that you need. And then we're going to talk about the last piece where he talks about the generational blessing. How he says, I'm going to keep blessing the world through you generationally. And, and, and we're going to see how this really unfolds and looks like in our life. And these banners that you see here today, this is part of uh, uh, the system and carrying the, the mission of Bridge Church, helping people encounter God, helping people experience freedom, helping people equip for purpose, and empowering people to make a difference. Why? Because this is how you engage at this house. This is how you engage with your walk with the Lord. It, it, those are simple four steps. Let me just tell you, it's not, it's not linear, it's cyclical. Some of you longtime believers, you've looked at your relationship with the Lord as this. I'm growing. I'm elevating. I'm going to a new level. Let me just tell you, you're not going to a new level. It, you, you, the, the relationship, you, because if you do that, this is what you're going to trick yourself into. You're going to trick yourself into thinking that there is another level of a class, of a, of a Bible study, of a life, that only those super special people, the worthy people, the pastors and all, those theological crazy people, all that they know that I don't. And if you think that there's a, something that's not accessible to you that, that someone else has, that's when you see your linear relationship with the Lord. Like, I, w- when I've got enough, when I know enough, when I have enough, when I'm worthy enough, when I'm good enough, when I'm, when I'm ready enough, when I'm... No, 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 God doesn't work like that. It, it works just like this. Why? Because I know it just simply. I know that I'm called to be a husband. And guess what? 
Give me one more year around the sun and I realize I need to be a better husband. And guess what? Give me another year around the same sun and guess what I figured out again? I need to be a better husband and I can be and I, a better father, a better man, a better, a better worshiper. I, I, I'm not doing this, I'm doing this. God gave me who I am at the very beginning. And who I am is who I grow. And who I grow is in this circle of life that's saying, I'm just going to continue to circle up and shore up every area of my life and be a well-rounded believer. Amen? Amen. I got to close, but man, I, I can't wait to teach the rest of this. It's a lot to unpack. But I hope you're walking away today with being able to take a leap of faith, right? Being able to understand that 2022, 5782 is not determined by anybody else but by the report. The Bible says, who will believe the report of the Lord? You can listen to this whole message and say, Landon, you're not that in tune with the Holy Spirit. I don't agree that you heard from, I don't know, that doesn't really, and you could disagree, and that's okay. Don't, and if you disagree, you won't come into agreement with what God is trying to do, and that's all right. You're not disagreeing with me, you're disagreeing with him. Because as for this house, this is the word for the Lord. And, and so when, as we move forward, you, you come into agreement, you take a leap of faith, and then you find a place to dwell. Now, now, as we close, I want you to think about that. When you go home today, how can you begin to just process and think, how am I going to dwell? You know how you dwell, you negative people? Come on, where, am I, where is it? We dwell, oh, well, and you look like the insane person in the car and then try to act like you're just talking to somebody on the phone, and you spiral because you dwell on all the wrong things. Well, can we flip the script this year and start dwelling with the Lord? Meditate on his word both day and night. Can, can we change what we dwell on and who we dwell with? Because remember that dwell, he talked about the foundations, Right? He dwelt in a land that felt foreign. You're not from this world. You're in this world. You're from heaven. You should, if you feel too comfortable and in place, something's not right. There should be a little discomfort. So challenge yourself. How can you dwell with the Lord? And we'll talk more about that next week. Why don't you stand with me? We're going to pray and close and speak our declaration. Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you, God, for everything that you've done and everything that you're going to do. And I pray that you would lead us, guide us, direct us, and speak to us. Help us to continue to walk in this vision, this mandate, this mission that you've given us for this year. And Lord, I pray that we would just be able to dwell with you in a divine manner, God, Lord. And I pray that we would be able to receive this word, a spoken word over our house, over this house, God, over our generations, God, Lord, that would protect this house, protect our house, and Lord, bring about, Lord, a blessing and increase in growth and maturity and development from generation to generation to generation. We may not arrive where we're desiring in our generation, but the next generation will stand on our shoulders and go farther than we ever could. And Lord, I thank you that we're not just thinking in one, we're thinking in three. And I thank you, God, that you're expanding our mind, expanding our territory, and causing us to go outside of what we normally see and see in a supernatural way, God, Lord, where you're calling us to go and what you're calling us to do so that we may dwell divinely with God. And Lord, we thank you that 2022 is going to be a divine year of dwelling with the Lord, a spoken covering of protection over a house of generations. And we speak it, we declare it, we believe it, and we receive it. And all those who do shouted a good amen and gave God some praise. Awesome, awesome. We are so glad that you joined us today. If you made a spiritual decision today, whether that be dedicating your life to Christ for the first time or rededicating your life to Christ, email us at info at wearebridge.church and let us know you made that spiritual decision. Also, if you are joining our Bridge Church online family for the very first time, we have a special gift for you. Email us at info at wearebridge.church to share some information so we can get that gift out to you. We're so happy that you joined us today and we can't wait to see you soon. Make sure to stay connected because we are so much better together.